Power Book 2, Ghost, Season 3, Episode 6, Land of Lies. Monet is at the morgue to identify Lorenzo's body. Diana is giving some to Celine. Kane is playing poker at a party in the penthouse. Drew is drawing and texting Gordo. Then they all get a text from Monet, or a call from Monet. I'm not going to lie, Salim. I didn't think you was ever going to get the draws, fam. I didn't either. I didn't think you was ever going to get the booty. I thought she was going to kick you to the curve long before you ever got the draw. So, you know. He got him just in the nick of time, too. Just in the nick of time, too, boy. Because if he'd have waited one more day to try to get that done, it'd have been O.V. Curtains. (laughs) Davis and Sachs discuss Lorenzo being killed. Davis said he'd reach out, and then Davis asked about Lauren's case. Sarik asked him about it. Uh, Jenny texts Sachs that they need to meet. Davis then mentions that Theo needs to get out as soon as possible. I, I, I don't know, know what Davis is, is doing. He doesn't have a sharp eye on what's going on with Monet. He doesn't have a sharp eye on what's going on with his brother. What, what are you distracted on, bro? You're not putting total focus on either one of these things. Yeah. Things are running circles around you in, in both aspects what are you paying attention to, Davis? But like, like that's probably what we should get in the next couple of uh, episodes. Why the hell is Davis so distracted? Why does he look like a rube all of a sudden? Like somebody's gonna have to explain that to me. How he went from pulling sacks out of the depths and 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 being his one lifeline he had left in the in the profession of law to now being played like a fiddle by that same man. I don't. Somebody got to explain that to me. Riddle me that. Agreed. Riddle me that. Yeah, no. Sax is dog walking Davis right now, and it's nuts. He is. Lauren wakes up, and among thinking about the discussion she had with Tariq and thinking about her parents, ADA Sullivan claims they need her back at the safe house. Lauren lied and claims she didn't go anywhere, and ADA Sullivan informs her that her parents have been moved as well. ADA Sullivan threatens that she'll never see her parents again if she doesn't cooperate. Lauren requests to speak with Sax. Yo, she she's got to be doing something illegal at this point. Like, she has to be doing something illegal at this point. Sex already let her know, like, you don't have to cooperate. So what what would make you think she has the right to keep your parents from you against their and your will? Mm-hmm. Girl, you, you, know your, you know one of your parents' phone numbers by heart. Call them. The class discusses what is truth, who determines it, and does it even matter? Bruchandria eventually uses an example of the Declaration of Independence to prove her point, stating that the people who wrote it owned like 600 slaves. Goes All men Brenner. created equal, and you got a whole <laughs> compound worth of niggas working for you. Facts. Facts. Salim then goes to correct her and calls the slaves enslaved Africans because slavery was their circumstance, not their identity. Oh, boy, so Salim, you her. sound like Ashley from Bel Air, boy. You sound <laughs> just like Ashley from Bel Air, boy. That ain't the point. That's not what we're talking about right now. Facts. Facts. Oh. Speaking of race relations, the white boy is getting closer to Proud Boy status by claiming that Trump wasn't wrong. Trump wasn't wrong about everything. You're just listening to your news source. <laughs> the Tejadas are sitting down at the table to discuss Lorenzo's death. Diana asks if they found out who did it, and Monet claims that the police don't give a damn about them, which, immediate red flag. Right? Like, they don't, they don't find nothing about Lorenzo's death. Considering he's a whole ass criminal, a large criminal mm-hmm. at that. Mm-hmm. Drew mm-hmm. claims that he thinks it was the Russians, and Kane is not so sure. Monet says Kane needs to learn how to deal with some of the family's clean money. Kane begins to give her that look as if he doesn't believe any of the shit that she's saying. Knowing that they added Super Detective to Kane's power set, he'll find out, which made Monet's line about putting two and two together and coming up with five hilarious. Hey. No, so you know what? I actually it, it made it made a little bit more sense for Kane to be the first one to blow it up, up because he was the one transferring information between Monet and 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 Lorenzo, yeah. right? Like Diana wasn't part of that, Drew wasn't part of that. They wasn't privy to any of this shit. It was all Kane, Lorenzo and Monet. Yeah. So for him to be the first one to be like, "Man, I told you that that Poppy was the one that told me about that GTG." And the nigga end up dying two days later. Like, yeah, some stink over there. It smell like buki. I don't like it. So then, and then calling him dumb <laughs> is a stupid thing to do. No, 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 no. Not even calling him dumb. So much is saying that if you keep pushing this, I'm gonna kill you like your father. Cause, cause if I wanted Lorenzo dead, then that means I would want you dead too, right? Because you was keeping your father's secrets. 
Damn, it's a good thing that I ain't want to kill your daddy, huh? Facts. Facts. Oh, so you really think I'm like before I thought it was just a thing of like keeping me under control. You know, I'm wild. And, you know, you called me an animal because you don't really want me to act. No, it's none of that. You legitimately think you have a, a mentally delayed son. You think I have an IUP. Yep. That's what you think. Mm hmm. Because you, you essentially just confirmed to me that it was you. And now I just need to bide my time until I can prove it. It's over with for you. Yeah. Tariq whoops Brayden's ass all over Lauren. Brayden claims that this all happened because Kane claims she had a wire and that Effie must have told Kane that. It's all coming down, ain't it? It's all coming down. Do these conversations sound familiar to y'all? I'm just saying. Just saying, do these do these conversations for my OG power fans? Do these set of circumstances and these conversations sound familiar at all? Do the characters in play maybe seem a little bit familiar? Hmm. I wonder where we saw this saga before. Hmm. Ghost never beat Tommy's ass. <laughs> he unloaded the clip at Tommy multiple times. No. He tried to kill Tommy. Exactly. The hell running the fair ones. He unloaded the clip. Sax is talking to Tate about Theo so that he can help get him out. Tate states that he needs something in exchange, of course, because he's Tate. And Sax offers his watch for some strange reason. Tate then claims because he because black people are poor uh, and yeah. he ain't never seen nothing this expensive. My yeah. five thousand dollar plain Jane Rolex, of course not. <laughs> Tate then claims that he wants Davis to run an opposition campaign against Tate's opponent. Ada Sullivan pulls up to apologize. Sax admits bullshit. That, oh, bullshit. She pulled up to apologize. But, but, Her before, lying ass. Before that happens, Tate calls uh, Sax's watch absolutely trash, which. <laughs> Yikes. Sax admits that he knows that he got used. He then claims he wants justice the right way. ADA Sullivan attempts to blackmail Sax into working with her by using his testimony that he showed up to truth with a gun. And now we have created a motive for Sax to do what he does and double cross the good guys to, to escape criminality. Mm -hmm. Now you've backed a weasel into a corner. She's pressing everywhere you know what ada sullivan and monet have a lot in common yo they do they have a lot in common it makes sense it make it makes perfect sense that sullivan can't tag monet as as the lead in all of this conflict and that she's going after Tariq with blanca because she's blind to herself so it makes sense that she wouldn't see her heir apparent anywhere you know on, on the board as the real problem because they both doing some of the same shit. You trying to get to whatever end you feel like is most advantageous for you. Because at first it was just about getting drug dealers and criminals off the street. And then it became about Tariq. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, Rage Cop died. And now, it's now finally, it's about Monet. You have these sliding motivations. Because really it's only about you making it out of this with something to to pay for everything that you've gone through. Yes. If Warren goes in there and and gets on the stand and testifies against Tariq, and then somehow it comes out that you withheld her from her parents and made her continue this lie about her being dead even against her will, sounds a lot like coercion to me. So then all of the fruit that bore from that corrosion coercion would get thrown out. So she's already laying the framework for this entire case to go to shit. Tariq and Effie are heading somewhere. Tariq confides information in Effie about all the shit that happened in the original power, including killing Ghost. Effie claims she has some shit to admit, and instead of discussing Lauren, she talks about her parents and how one of her mom's boyfriends used to touch her and claims that her mom married the guy. Tariq is real short and asks that there is nothing else she wants to discuss. That's when Tariq pulls up to the crime scene and makes her get out. The conversation was interesting. I think that's the closest we will ever get to Tariq admitting his fault in everything that happened with his family. Sure. I, I think that is the closest we will ever get because he did admit to whatever bullshit he got into to try to cover up him getting kidnapped or whatever led to the reign of dying. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, 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 that's the closest admission that we've ever gotten. He does walk through 
how he felt and what led him to to pulling the trigger against Ghost, but he still doesn't draw the connection. Ghost was going to make you go spend some time in jail for the body that you caught. Now, 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 some for some reason, Power Writing Room decided to make him a bold faced ass liar within the last three episodes of the show, where one episode, this is within one season, he's telling his son, yo, if it comes to it, I'll take the charge for you. I'm not going to let you go down for that, which is what a real father would do, especially considering the circumstances of who he shot and why he shot him. Then, by the last two episodes, he's like, yeah, no, fuck it, little nigga, you got to go to jail. But then he's not... He, he's not reconciling the fact that that was the driving force to you killing your dad. It wasn't. It wasn't protecting your mom. It wasn't. It, it, it just wasn't. Sure. It, it wasn't, fam. Yeah. Because if you wasn't going to jail, I think the whole choke up Tasha thing probably would have went over. You wouldn't have been happy about it, but you for sure wouldn't have killed your father over it. You were going to jail. The last thing you said to Ghost was, "You told me you would take this charge for me, and you lied." You killed your father to protect yourself. Stop feeding me this shit about you protecting your family. You couldn't let your mom go out like that. No, it had to be you because you had to protect you. I don't think we'll ever get that last little step. Even even grandma. I really like I really cared for this episode. I liked it a lot. Sure. I think that's as far as, as Tariq's ever going to go in terms of assuming his blame and all of this. But Effie, Effie's story does up until this point, line up with the, the theory of her being Noma's kid right now. Sure. Yeah. Right now it does, right? The story was my mom had a bunch of boyfriends. One of them liked me. She's leaving it intentionally vague, but she's trying to give up some information because she can't bring herself to tell her about Lauren. Mm -hmm. So she's giving some real information, but she's still staying vague about it. She had boyfriends. One of them liked to touch me, and she married the guy, and she's still married to him. As far as I know, you know what makes it hard to get a divorce? If you just shot your ex in the forehead. It's going to take some convincing. It's going to take some faith for me to believe that Power had this amount of long game. Or excuse me, Ghost had this amount of long game that they pulled a thread. A, a, a small, seemingly minuscule thread from Choke back in the original Power series and drew it all the way back to where we are now. Sure. You, uh, we'll see. We will well, see. Well, you know what? If that's they, where we're going. But the parts are there so far. They did the same thing low-key on a much smaller scale with Mecha being connected to Lobos. Smaller scale for sure. But How was he connected to Lobos again? He was, he was involved with the organization and was a CI even back then. And Yeah, okay. Okay, I got you. Got you. Yeah. So, so then, okay. A Tariq and Effie get into an argument about what happened. Eventually, Effie reaches for a gun, but Tariq says he couldn't hurt her even if he wanted to because there's a case on them. Tariq claims she fucked up, and Effie claims she did it all to protect Tariq since Lauren had a wire. Tariq tells her to find her own way home and drives off in his Lambo truck, which, whose fucking car is this? Yo, so I could, I, maybe I got to go back and re rewatch this. Did she say he rented that or that he bought it? <laughs> oh, my God. Because if he bought a lamb truck and he's rolling up to Stansfield after being accused of being a drug kingpin and a murderer, I'm about to go jump off a bridge. I am about to go play in traffic. <laughs> what is what is going on right now? After the other car that he just bought, too? Like, I, th I, I, I I'm pretty sure they said rented. Rented makes the most sense. I'm going to stick with rented. I don't anticipate us seeing Tariq in a red lamb truck again this season. Can you not rip the lamb truck? It's already hot <laughs> right now. No, no, no. I'm saying, can you, specifically Tariq, a college student, not rent the lamb truck? I know you're already supposedly rich, but you haven't gotten I, I think he was trying. To, he was trying to get Effie's guard down. He was trying to make it seem like it was a date night thing, you know. And all the while, they're driving right back to the spot where she threw her ass in the lake. I didn't recognize that shit until they were out of the car. And Tree said, "Why? Do, what the fuck was going on here? And I was like, oh, shit, that's where she pushed the car in. Yeah, that's where she yeah. pushed it in. Yeah. Laura speaks with Sax, and she asks if Tariq is innocent since, she had nothing, since he had nothing to do with the murder. 
Sax claims that even though Tariq didn't try to kill her, he's still a monster. Keep in mind, while he's telling Lauren all of this, he's already gotten reamed out and extorted into convincing Lauren to testify. So keep in mind, as Sax is trying to, you know, play his old oh, Tariq still did a bunch of shit. He's he's yeah, he did some of that stuff that 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 Sax is talking about. But Sax do not know 100 percent that he did everything he said he did. Some of the shit he's lying about. Yeah. He's either lying or he just threw it in there to convince Lauren. Well, Sax had the wrong idea that the St. Patrick family tried to groom bro into this. At least absolutely at not. Least ghosted not at to. all. He he bucked his privileged upbringing like 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 a like a Bronco bucks a new rider. That man had every socioeconomical advantage you could possibly have. It was absolutely zero. Zero reason for Tariq to become a drug dealer. Leave me alone with all of that. Oh, but his father. I ain't seen Pablo Escobar's kids move a single brick of uh, anything. A uh, shit. Stop with that. Most of these people do this kind of stuff. And when they have kids, they go to Columbia. They go to Harvard. They go to Yale. Maybe it's to eventually fold them back into the business and have some legitimate wings. But for the most part, it's so that they have their children protected. Yeah. Even in death, Ghost was trying to get Tariq to go the right way by incentivizing him to finish college. He was dangling millions of dollars of inheritance money in front of his ass. And the only thing you had to do was graduate. That's it. That's it. Only thing you got to do. Graduate. Graduate. Get a degree. That's all. That's all. But, but. He was so clearly a monster, right? Evil. Just vicious bastard. Effie and Brayden are prevented from getting into the building with the product. Effie and Brayden come to the conclusion that Tariq kicked them out of the business. Effie claims it was Brayden's fault for talking, but to be honest, it's Effie's fault for not talking soon enough. Or getting a job done, maybe? Yeah. Like maybe if you actually did that shit, like did it, did it, and not try to, you know, close your eyes and walk away, <laughs> we probably wouldn't be dealing with this. Sure. Since, yeah. since, since we're talking about how much Tariq couldn't get it done, his bitch ass couldn't get it done, okay, if you actually did it, then we wouldn't be talking about this now, would we? Brayden shows up at Monet's bar where Kane asks why he didn't show. He then shows Brayden the life insurance papers, and according to Brayden, 100K is not enough to meet the minimum investment, which is, which is wild. <laughs> That's wild. Woo! <laughs> Lord have mercy. And hey, they getting to it over there, boy. Facts. They getting to it over there. It makes you wonder the why the air. It makes you wonder why the air to all of this would even be selling drugs in the first place. But hey. If we don't have that, then we don't have power, right? So let's just keep going. Kane then tells Brayden that Tariq kept him in the business because he'd kill Tariq otherwise and that Brayden should level up in the same way. So he can't kill Tariq, sure. but he can take a lot away from Tariq. And see, okay, this is why I don't understand why Kane even had to break this down to Brayden because Brayden knew himself that he had some level of control over Tariq. Why is, why is he working at Westing Holdings anyways? Why is he not working for Tate? Brayton's not unfamiliar to the idea of manipulating Tariq and using what leverage he has to exert what he wants. So why the hell did Kane have to tell you to do that? He probably feels, I think he feels guilty over what happened with Lauren. Sure. And so he would, he was trying to kind of like give it up. Like, all right, you know, I did, I fucked up. I'm wrong. He right. I messed up. At the same time, bro, you ain't about to take no millions of dollars from me. That's not going to happen. Especially when the person who expects me to be working on this told me they would kill me if I stopped. That, plus he just whooped your ass and prevented you from getting into the building that your father owns. <laughs> you have all the motivation in the world to do all of this. Bro. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. What, is, what the fuck is going on with Drew? What is going on with Drew? That's a really good question. What what is happening to Drew to the Drew character right now? I don't know. <laughs> We're about to address some wild shit that he does throughout this episode. Char character turns must be very hard to do and right. And I'm not I'm not even being facetious. Like it must be a very difficult thing to like do successfully when you deal with edits and, and, and cuts to make time for the episodes and 
it, it being a supporting character at that. So like you don't have a lot of time to spend on them. But man, some of these character turns be really like breakneck speed. So not even an episode ago, right? Drew is able to set up within a day. He's able to set up a way for them to move these guns. They gonna get them out. Blah yada yada. He's smart enough to hang around, wait for the text for Poppy come through, save the day. Very pragmatic thinker, mm -hmm. right? Clearly has been the, the the smartest of the three candidates in terms of running the business from the children this entire time. Everybody's known that. Monet's known that. Uh, 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 Lorenzo's, Lorenzo's known, that. known that even though he didn't want to give it over to Drew immediately mm -hmm. he knew Drew was the best option now Drew is running face first into a Russian conflict with absolutely zero proof like he won't even hear he won't even entertain the idea of getting cold hard evidence that it was them first it, he knows it's right in his mind you sound like Kane. So are are we playing each other's roles right now? What's going on? Well, with Kane being super detective, yeah, probably. I, I, I'm I I'm trying to figure out how this shit happened. Like, on Kane's side of it, I think I know what it is. Uh, it's a combination of what just happened to Lorenzo, what he just went through with Lorenzo. Like, he had, he had Lorenzo by the nuts. He ends up giving that power away because Lorenzo saves his life. Lorenzo proved to him that family was worth more than power to him. Okay. Same thing with Monet. Monet gets some information, some shit that she don't like. And now it's, it's, it's more important for someone to feel her wrath from losing Zeke and to preserve the family. So he has these two situations where his father took one route. His mother took a completely different one. And in the result of it, his father is dead. The second part of it, I think, is Effie. I think he's found it someone he's found someone that's motivated him to change. I think he's found someone that motivates him to change because he sees a lot of what he thinks in his thought process in Effie, but she don't move like him. Yeah. She don't move like him. So it's like, oh, I can low-key respect her because she don't act like me, but I completely get why she does the things that she does. Like we are we are on the same page in terms of our mentality. She just does it differently. And that's probably going to give Kane a little bit more complexity as a character as we move forward in the series. We shall see. Tariq's key card isn't working because Brayden denies him access. Brayden claims that if Tariq is going to block him out, that he can do the same. Brayden apologizes for what went down and for lying to Tariq. Brayden claims their family. Tariq claims everybody is just like his family, a bunch of liars. Nigga. 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 Man. <laughs> Eureka. Eureka, because I was getting so annoyed with this, 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 this outlook <clears throat> that Tariq had about, man, yeah, this is the real family here. And if, if my dad would have just kept it like this, everything would have been perfect. And slowly but surely, he's realizing that when you run what your daddy ran, people fuck it up for you. You ain't got to fuck it up yourself. They fuck it up for you. They do it for you. They lie to you. They manipulate you. They try to increase their positions in their life as to keep you exactly where you at. Making them money. Making them rich. They want you exactly where you at, Tariq. Indefinitely. Whether they will say it out of their mouths or not, they want you exactly where you are today. Indefinitely. Keeping them rich and safe and growing. You wanted to be this, oh, he was the problem, and he's the monster, and he, and he, and he, and he, and he, and he, and, he, and what did Grandma say at the graveyard? You'll get there. You'll get there. But you, he's starting to learn some of these ghost lessons. You want to be ghost so bad? Learn some of these lessons, son. Have your best friend betray you. Have the woman you love care more about the drug business then you and your mental well-being and what you would want and what you would do. Tariq pulls up to Raina's gravesite and speaks about what's been going down. That's when Big Mama shows up and lets him know about himself and how because of his actions, she has no one. She then informs him that if he doesn't stop what he's doing, he'll end up six feet under right next to James. When you point one fingers, three pointing back at you, old cliche, but damn if Tariq didn't need to hear it. Yeah. 
Big like you talking about all this stuff, your daddy's past caught up with him. Your daddy tried desperately, even in the wake of his failed marriage, a uh, 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 slain lover and, and, and dead daughter, tried desperately to leave his past behind him. Maybe it was too little too late. Maybe it was never going to happen. Maybe the wrong he had done in his life prior was 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 destined to put him, you know, just like Franklin, walking up down Brooklyn streets drunk and, and unaware. Maybe. Maybe. But what he wanted, what his motivation was, was peace, was ascension, was something different than what he was already doing. And before you get to that point. Right before you get to the to the to, well, maybe he's getting there a lot sooner than Ghost. Maybe, maybe. I would assume so. We'll see. He's still in college. Maybe he's reached that conclusion of this life is not where it's at a lot sooner than Ghost did. Yeah. Drew is drinking at the bar and Gordo pulls up. Drew claims he has a plan, but not enough people to go through with it. Gordo asks if Drew talked to Kane about it, and Drew says it's what he has to do. Gordo a nasty nigga too. Ah, uh, yeah. Gordo a nasty nigga too. Everything. You gonna sit here? You going to sit here and let this man start a war that you know he's pushing himself into. But you know what? It's it's almost it's perfect symmetry. That's why I said this this episode was was a chef's kiss. This episode was very good because as Gordo is allowing Drew to dive head first into something he knows he doesn't want and and also <laughs> knows is wrong on the principle. He knows it's wrong on the principle because he know them Russians ain't killed Lorenzo. But that shit was done to him all the same. That shit was done to him all the same and he don't even know it yet. But on top of that, he got his get back for that because he's setting Drew up to get shot at by some Russians. Mm -hmm. He's getting he's getting payback on Monet without him even knowing that he's getting payback on Monet. And without Monet even knowing that she's getting payback for what she just set up Gordo to do to Lorenzo. It's it's a conundrum. It's just spinning. Tariq pulls up to Diana's room and apologizes for not making it to the repast. Drew, Brayden's sister, and Diddy's son Justin for some fucking reason. Yo, I was like, is that Diddy's son? <laughs> yes. For some reason, who knows? They are all drinking in the room and decide to leave since Tariq pulled up. Salim is on his way into the room and Justin says that she's in there with somebody else. After taking a swig from a bottle of gas station vodka, Tariq attempts to ask Diana if she would work for them, and she declines because of what Lorenzo had planned. Fuck no. <laughs> Fuck no. <laughs> Apparently, Monet wants Diana to give the eulogy at Lorenzo's funeral. He knew where Effie was going next. He knew. He knew. He knew her. Now, it was one thing you can say about Tariq. He is smart. He's smart. Sometimes, to an unbelievable degree, that I could absolutely see him tracking Effie's next move when she got cut out from the business. All right, cool. Let me, let me, if it can't be Brayton, if it can't be Tariq, my next closest ally will be probably the only other person that I know here personally and I know that can do this, which is Diana. And before she ever gets a chance to get back to Diana, he didn't already gotten them draws. Why would and he knows, he knows, he know, he know. Guy has feelings for him and he knows that. Sure. He been knew that. He don't feel a way about her the way that Di feels about him. Effie tried to tell her ass that earlier this season. Mm -hmm. But Di don't care because, you know, Salim's a dick. And a, and a punk, by the way, too. Boy, I'm all up on that door. Hey, Di! Doom, 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 doom. Diana! Doom, 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 doom. Diana! <laughs> he didn't even try. Ain't no, ain't no way it's going down like that, fam. It's never about to go down like that. Yikes. Yeah, why wouldn't Effie go to Kane first? Or does Tariq just... She not? doesn't trust Kane. She don't trust Kane. She can trust Diana. She can't trust Kane. Well, at least not up until, you know, what happens later, you know, later on this episode. But I don't think at that point she feel like she could... Kane probably the only reason why Tariq knows any of this, to, as, as much as, as far as she knows. Sure. As far as she knows, Kane is, is the reason why he knows. Sure. So. Sure. Drew is delivering Russian vodka to some spot and a Russian woman stops him. Drew turns all that gay shit off for a second to hit on her and ask for her number. She says she can't have her phone out and Drew claims he heard the managers were assholes. 
She tells him that one of the managers is drinking at the bar right now. Drew writes his number on her arm, which is absolutely hilarious. I thought it was funny. Drew then pulls up on bro drinking out of booth and claims that he's the one, only one leaving the spot alive after what the Russian did to his father, which hilarious because none of that is true. After hearing gunshots, Drew takes the opportunity to stab bro. Good job, Drew. Hope you feel like a big man. <laughs> That like a big man scene now. Was just so. I mean, obviously we know it's unnecessary, and he doesn't. But it it, it was just done. I'm like, oh my god, bro! Somebody gonna die off of this. Somebody you don't want gonna die off of this for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Effie pulls up to Diana's room and speaks to her about what she got going on at the candy store. Effie wants to team up with Diana and says that she can't tell Tariq anything unless they're until they're up and running. Diana opens the door further and shows that Tariq is right there getting dressed. Yeah, I don't know. I felt like the slip back to, to Tariq was a little bit fast for Diana. But I think they've already established that she has stronger feelings for Tariq than Tariq has for her. Again, if Diana was the pick, then, you know, what's all the what's all the heat about Lauren then? Sure. Tariq gave Diana access to the lockers, and so she puts a stash into one of them. Unfortunately, now there's a camera right above it. So now Tariq is directly responsible for getting Diana caught the fuck up in some shit that she don't even want to be in anymore. And now they'll probably leverage that against her to get her to testify against her family. Great job, Tariq. Yikes. Great job. Yikes. Great job. Why you couldn't take him? Why you couldn't just take him right there and leave with him and go put him in the locker? Because that's exactly what ADA Sullivan and Blanca wanted. I told I told y'all sitting on that locker was going to have some ramifications. I knew that. Yeah, they've been sitting on it for three seasons now. They need to, you know, up their operations. Tariq texts Big Mama if she knows where she wants to meet. He heads her way, but there's a tall, bald black man following Tariq. Turns out Discount Jeffrey had people following Tariq, and he just messed up a drop for him. A drop. Yeah. Uh, Tariq claims he will let Noma know about this, but bro pulls a gun out on him. Discount G then tells him that he will still be keeping an eye on everyone. I'm not positive how this happened. Maybe they've been sitting on the grandma the entire time and saw her packing her bags and just naturally assumed since he had a bag that they were both leaving. I think that was his way of freeing her up so that it was either his way of freeing her up so that she could get out or it was his way of, of testing it to see if he tried to run what would happen. Right, like he probably just put them bricks in a bag and was like, "All right, I'm gonna make it look like I'm about to run and see how they react, so I can have an idea if I ever do need to run of how they react." Right, like, are they watching my grandma? Are they watching my big mama to see if you know has a tail whether or not I'm getting ready to flee? And they gave it up, so they did tip their hand. Um, but now, as a result of that, everybody's gonna be under more surveillance, which puts a nix on all of that. Yeah, Bray and Effie, y'all out of the business bullshit because Noma didn't say that, so. Yeah, I would think that that's probably the case just being that he already had a story in place, <coughs> ready to go. Being like, oh yeah, I was about to make this huge drop and you fucked it up for me. That yeah. kind of makes sense that he would probably have something in place to do exactly what you said. Mm -hmm. uh, Tariq calls Big Mama and lets her know that he's sorry for not making it, but she will still be able to go be with Yaz and Tasha. Big Mama wants him to go as well, but because of Noma, he won't be able to go. Yep, yep, yep. At least she got out. At least she. I don't know how. If if you were able to set that up, then why exactly wasn't your grandmother always with Tasha and Jazz? If it was that easy, if it was that easy, it's just calling Tamika and having her, you know, take your grandma to your mom and your sister. Why haven't you been done that, bro? That, why haven't you been did that if it was that simple? Because he was beefing with her for a while. That's why. Because <laughs> he's a murderer and a liar, and his grandma was the only one that saw it. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, we're now at the funeral. Diana gives the eulogy, and somehow Blanca and ADA Sullivan show up with files in hand, including camera shots of Diana at the lockers. How did they get into this funeral? Who just let ADA Sullivan and Blanca into Lorenzo's funeral? I don't know. Fucking, um, and it doesn't look like anybody noticed them either. They don't show a shot of Monet or Kane or anybody looking back at them or being mad that they're there. You know? Don't even, no one even notices. 
Kane claims to never let the family down again and takes the chain from Lorenzo's casket, which, I don't know, I thought that was weird. Which is a callback, well, I don't know why he took the chain out of his father's ass, but anyways, it's a callback to what I was talking about earlier, right? The, the juxtaposition between how his father handled betrayal in the family versus how her mother handled it, Right? His father was his lapdog, his whipping post for the first quarter of the season. And then he still ends up saving his son's life and shows him humility and civility. Right? Because he understands what Kane's trying to do. And he understands why he's pressing so hard. He's got the power. He's trying to be the big man. But even in the midst of that, and you making mistakes, I'm going to still keep you safe because you're my son. Right? Monet doesn't have, she doesn't have that type of maternal connection to her children honestly it's that lack of a maternal connection that spearheaded this entire thing because if you were zeke's mother from the jump and told your kids about their brother from the jump none of this shit would have happened but since you allowed your sister to raise him in north carolina then you allowed your conscience to weigh over on you and you brought him back here to live with you in new york which ultimately led to his death it is your lack of a maternal instinct that is that is that's that's the downfall of the family, not not Kane's uh, aggressiveness, not Drew's sexuality, and not Diana's want to be legitimate. It's you. I don't think she's owed the benefit of the doubt of a grieving mother because a lack of being a mother is is what led us here in the first place. The Russians pull up and shoot shit up at the funeral. Drew, with some bass in his voice, is absolutely hilarious. I don't know why he had to have all that bass in his voice at that specific time, but anyway. The Russians shoot like stormtroopers, and Kane gets mad that Drew got them into a war. Monet's stupid ass claims that Drew was right. I know she knows that that's essentially wrong and that she's still playing she, them at we some are. Point. We just saw you yesterday tell him not to do anything stupid and chill. And your mans ran off and did it anyways. Now Drew's acting like Kane. I don't understand that. I'm, I, I don't. I don't. I don't know where we're going with that. Yeah, yeah. Kane pulls up on Effie, and Effie is telling Kane that she's about to burn Tariq shit down to the ground. Kane stops her and then offers her some product on the side. The Effie Kane situation is happening much quicker than expected. Didn't think it was gonna happen. Hold it. Hold it. For sure. For sure. Brayden and Tariq meet to attempt to get up from under Noma as soon as possible. He thinks that the picture Effie found may be key, but they need to move drugs in the meantime. Davis uses his burner to call Monet and says that the feds rolled up on the Russians and that the Tejadas are safe for now. He says that they need to lay low, but I have a feeling that the Tejadas will not be laying low next episode. Then Monet has a hallucination of Lorenzo stating that the kids will eventually find out. Oh, oh, y'all are y'all doing it, man. Y'all doing it. I would have loved to to see Tariq see the ghost of his father, but maybe this is a sign of things to come. One thing for sure, I think we're at the end of the road of Monet. I don't think we will have to suffer through her for too much longer. I think this was a heavy dose of foreshadowing, and one of her children is going to end up taking her out. My money's still on Diana. I, I think how she finds out, though, will be Kane. Once Kane is able to connect the dots and he has a, a for sure, a for sure, like, idea of what's going on, he'll probably sick either Drew or Diana on Monet or just let the information come out and, and, and one of them will be the ones that actually makes it happen. I, was gonna say, I can Drew, see it kind of being Drew Drew's with this whole thing that's going on with Gordo. It's possible. Mm -hmm. But I, I feel Monet a lot more than I feel Drew at this moment. You feel Diana more than Drew. Diana, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yep. Oh, good. So yeah, I think Drew is a, a high possibility just for the simple fact that a, you had me enter this war with the Russians over absolutely nothing. You let me do it, yeah, yeah. And then on top of that, you, you use you use my my papi chulo to do it. And you're in the trailer. You're telling him not to see me anymore. Yeah, no, which plenty of reasons he clearly gonna tell you the SMD. Hey, boy, you shouldn't have used me. You shouldn't have used me. Ah ha ha ha! <laughs> you knew what I was doing to your son. Yep. Yep. But you did the shit anyway because you are evil, and there's a maternal bone broken in your body. Yep. All of that plus the character shift that you just mentioned. 
has to land somewhere, right? Yeah. Yep. Yep, 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 for sure. Plus Diana will be in jail, so <laughs> So we'll see. Give us your thoughts on episode seven of Power Book Ghost uh season three. Three. In the comments below, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Come back next week for an episode, or excuse me, for a review of episode number eight. Absolutely, and make sure that you check out our playlist full of reviews for Power Book 2 Ghosts, Power Book 3 Raising Canaan, and Power Book 4 Force. And make sure you subscribe because, like he said, every week we will be putting out a review for every episode of Power Book 2 Ghosts.